everybody happy Monday welcome to our Monday videos I'm Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes and we are sewing through the tea party sew along and we are making up the teacup C blocks this week and I have a very 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 special guest this week so I told you guys last week or two weeks ago I think that um, maybe it was last week my daughter is now a Flamingo Toes employee and so um, she was living in Virginia and um, she's done with her <laughs> job in Virginia yes. and so she is now here as part of our team so if you get packages if you order from us she's the one that will be handling all of our packaging and production and distribution and all of that kind of stuff so we're very very excited not just business wise but of course just excited to have her here yeah <laughs> And so, um, you want to say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Um, I'm excited to start this job, so it's going to be great. Um, and it's also great to be back home. So, yay! <laughs> so, we wanted you guys to uh, get to meet Becca, and um, we'll let her go, unless she has other things she would like to impart. No, no, I got to get back to work. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks Task. for coming, Becca. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm super happy to be with you guys today. Let's see who's here. I saw that Mona was on early and Terry. Terry's worrying about finishing up her um, or getting caught up. We don't stress about that here, Terry. You know that. <laughs> um, but yes, these teacup blocks are easier than the teapot. So if you're just now making up the teapot blocks and you're feeling like you're really behind, the teacup blocks go a lot faster. So hopefully that helps. Therese is here, and uh, Sandra, hey Sandra, from sunny Florida, nice. It's not sunny here in Tennessee today, it's gloomy, and it was supposed to rain all day, and it hasn't happened yet, and I'm not really sure if it's decided what it's gonna do yet or not. <laughs> uh, Pamela's here, Allison is here from Arizona, sunny again, that's great. Val is here, hey Val, she got to play, she said thanks for the bingo cards, um, so, if you guys tuned in um, to the Super Bowl yesterday and played uh, my commercial bingo game, give me a like holler and let me know how it worked out for you. Well, we played at the house yesterday and it was really fun. In fact, and this is by like, I have no idea what um, order the commercials are gonna come on when I do the bingo cards, but I actually won this year, so yay me. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, Lisa, Pamela, um, Let's see, Pamela and Teresa are discussing how they're a little bit behind. <laughs> Wendy's here. Connie. Dolores is here. Joy from Spruce Grove, Alberta. That sounds like a very pretty place to live, Joy. I don't know if it is or not, but it sounds nice. <laughs> Judy's here from Vermont. Um, yay, I'm so glad you guys are here. <laughs> uh, Pamela asked about the spelling of Becca. It's B-E-C-K-A. Um, so... Glad she, we're very, very excited that she's here, obviously. <laughs> hey, Connie's here and it's her first live. Welcome, Connie. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm so glad you guys are here. Yay. All right, you guys, we are making up the teacup C blocks. That's what we have right here. It's a very cute little block. Let's see, it's not gonna focus on, there we go, focusing, sort of. So these are a slightly different size than the other cups that we've made in the Tea Party Sew Along. This is the quilt that we're making up together. Um, it's called Tea Party. It's um, linked in today's video description. You can check out the pattern if you would like to sew along with us. I also know if you don't want to make the entire quilt, there are several people who are just making up a row as a runner, and I love that. I hope if you are doing that, you share photos of it because I would love to see it. I think I'm going to do that with all the like uh, loose <laughs> teacup and teapot patterns that I have made as part of the sew along class. So I think that I'm going to make up a cute runner for mine. So I'm really excited to sew this up with you guys. Let me show you the difference between the A, B, and C teacup blocks. We're gonna just dive in here real quick. Just stay tuned afterwards because I have some fun sew along updates for you guys for the RBD block challenge and the shine together quilt. 
And today um, I have our giveaways, of course. We have a really exciting giveaway for this week and then of course um, last week's winner. And today I am going to show you guys all of the brand new tea themed cross stitch patterns that I've come out with. They're all in the shop today and um, I'm gonna show you guys how they turned out and what the samples actually look like. So I'm really, really excited for you guys to see those. So once we're done talking about the teacup C blocks, don't, don't run away, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, let's see. Ruth says she's been working on the Meadowland. Couldn't have done it without the tutorials. Thanks, Ruth. I'm so glad you like it. If you're not familiar with what Meadowland is, that is a quilt sew along that we did last year with my Sweet Acres fabric collection, and it's got a barn in it and lots of florals. You can find the pattern in my shop right now. <laughs> and Sandra says she just bought Meadowland. Where are the tutorials? Okay, Sandra, so if you go to my YouTube channel, under the playlists, I have all the tutorials posted by playlist. So if you just find the Meadowland playlist, all the videos are gonna be there for you. So they're all on my YouTube channel. So hopefully that makes it easier for you. Yay for cross stitch. <laughs> okay, so let's look at um, tea party blocks. Are you guys ready? So here we have the teapot block. This is the first blocks uh, that we sew up in the quilt. And so that's how big they are. They're nice and tall. And then we started sewing our teapot, teacup blocks. So these, this is the A block. This is the B block. So you can see the difference in these two is in width. So same height, um, same height, but the teacup is slightly narrower. So it's not as wide, and I'll put it right there. You can see it's quite a bit narrower than the teacup A block. The teacup C block is the same width as the B, but it is taller. So it's just about a half an inch taller. And you might be thinking, okay, why are we making all these different size teacups? I promise you, when you put them all into the quilt, having variety is a good thing because it makes it look like it's a whole mix of different sized teacups because we're stacking some and some you know, are facing different directions. So it really adds a nice variety to the, um, to the, the shelves of the quilt, right? Um, you know, I designed it so it would look like they're on shelves. So that's what I mean when I say that. <laughs> um, so that's what we're doing here. So the teacup C blocks, I'm not gonna sew through the block today because we are, um, they're assembled exactly like the other two. What I want you to be careful with is the measurements on this. And like we talked about last week, once you have your teacup A blocks, if you aren't, um, you know, uh, let's see, how do I wear this? Just make sure that you're labeling them because they are all different sizes. When we go to sew them together in rows, it's important which pieces go where. So, so mark your teacup A blocks when you got those all done and then the B cup, Ball, uh, teacups, that sort of thing. So just so that you're not mixing them up. It's easy to do. For the C cups, I want you to note when you're cutting them out that these are not, the cup portion is not square. So I will tell you that the cup piece is the A piece and that piece is cut at four and a half by five. So it's going to be four and a half inches wide by five inches tall. So I want you to note that if you are sewing with different fabrics and you're working with directional fabrics, make sure you're cutting it out So because you want your teacup. I mean, it's important um, that the teacup looks like it's facing up, right? So you want your teacup to be four and a half wide by five inches tall for the C cups. Now, all the rest of the measurements are in the pattern for all the other pieces. You're going to need to get the pattern for that if you don't already have it. So the other thing that I wanted to recommend is it is a little bit tricky when you're looking at the picture to know what teacups go where. So what I've done is if you, I told you guys this last week in the instructions, it's going to have the labels for you when you assemble the row. You can see that it's teacup A, then teacup C, teacup D. It's written underneath here. But just take a minute and a pencil and go ahead and write on your pattern cover what sizes go where. So you can see how I labeled these A, C, D, B, 
and then you can actually just write it on yours from this B and then in the second row A D C and then C A D C and then the last row is C B A D so that's just so you know like if you're planning out your fabrics or if you want to look at yours and have it be the same as mine <laughs> that way you know what prints go where on which shelf or if you are working with your own fabrics you can do a little bit of plotting so you don't have two teacups together that are the exact same print or two you know green ones next to each other however you want to lay out your quilt but that's just um, a little bit of a tip as far as that so when it comes to assembly we're going to assemble our teacup just like we do with the um, with the others so you're going to for the teacup portion you're going to sew on these bottom pieces first and if you need the refresher on these go back and watch the a teacup a video because that one has the most detail as far as assembly you'll just use the different measurements and you're going to also make sure you're paying attention to which side of your cup you're making which you know if it's a left facing or right facing teacup this one you are going to make one sec let me look you're going to make five that have the tea handle teacup handle on the right and you're going to make one that has the teacup handle on the left okay I just want to make sure so six total and then of course you're going to make one stacked set and then the rest will be um, just have the sashing at the top so we're going to take our our fabric here sew it on the bottom corners and then we're going to add our sashing and which side you add will depending on which teacup you're making almost all of them will be this way but one will have the sashing on this side because the handle will be opposite then just like our others we're going to put those stitch and flip corners for our handle and sew the top and bottom portion of our handle and then we'll add our sashing and this doesn't look like it matches up but it does once we sew it all together and then the handle piece gets sewn to the cup and just like the others with our saucer we're going to go ahead and put those stitch and flips on each corner and we'll sew our saucer piece in place at the bottom of the teacup so you'll note your measurements for cutting and then also the sashing uh, measurements for the top pieces because they're going to be slightly different than the others because the teacups are slightly different so very easy assembly just like we've done before on the others but we're just noting our measurements so those are my tips for this week and um, so hopefully you guys are good with that and if again if you need the refresher course on assembly I have all kinds of tips on the teacup A and teacup B so next week is similar we're gonna make our teacups but they aren't going to have saucers so we're going to talk about that and how you can have a lot of fun with that the other thing I wanted to tell you guys is that um, these are a little bit bigger so if you want to do some fussy cutting in these or if you want to do go crazy and do some piecing in these you could do that like if you want to add in a stripe you have a little bit more because these are five inches tall you have a little bit more play here so get creative with your tea teacups you don't have to make it exactly like mine you can add in a little bit of embroidery you could add in a stripe here and a stripe here or you know just a big band in the center you just want to make sure once you've pieced the teacup before you go sew on these um, stitch and flip corners that it measures the exact same size as what you need to cut a solid piece of so if you're piecing it together it still needs to measure four and a half by five when you're done with your piecing so you can get creative with that and have fun um, but you know if you do that I would love to see it make sure you share a photo because <laughs> we want to see and cheer you on so that's exciting let me see if we have questions uh, Christine says it is spring like in northern Nevada that's lovely my dad said that his uh, daffodils are popping up in the yard so how great is that I, I don't know if we're gonna get snow on top of them but <laughs> Allison says she's still working on Meadowland too <laughs> 
Okay, Pamela says labeling is good. Yay. Um, let's see. Jean asked if the B cup was the only one that has a match up. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by match up, Jean. Okay, let me know what you mean by that. I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> uh, Pamela says she went through the book and wrote on the picture of the quilt each letter to keep it straight. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Um, and Leona's here. Hey, Leona. And Ruth likes the idea of a table runner. I love it. Okay, so we have all of our cute cups and um, I would love to see them. Definitely keep sewing photos, keep sharing photos. Let's look at our schedule so you guys know what we're doing for the next couple of weeks. Here's our schedule. So we are on the teacup C blocks. We only have two more weeks, you guys. Oh my goodness, I'm kind of sad. <laughs> so um, next week is the teacup D blocks and those are made entirely in stacks of three. So on each row, you can see a stack of three cups. Those are the D cups. So we have more cups to make next week, but we don't have any saucers. So it kind of works out about the same. <laughs> Probably not, but it won't be a whole lot more work. And then the last week on the 26th, we're gonna go over that really cute scalloped sashing that is underneath three of the rows and then we're going to talk about some tips as far as rows and putting your quilt together. If you haven't done a row quilt, I have some tips for assembly and getting those rows to be all the same. So we are going to finish things up there and it's going to be super, super fun. I saw that somebody in our Facebook group finished up her quilt already and I love it. It looks so great. So yay for that. Don't feel like you can't sew ahead and share that. Or if you're running way behind and you finish your quilt in a year, we still want to see it. <laughs> There's no time constraints here. Everything is good. So, all right, you guys, let's talk about the RBD block challenge. So if you aren't familiar with that, we are, um, is this a sew along hosted by Riley Blake? It's a free sew along. My dogs are going to bark here in a minute because there's a tractor going by. <laughs> it's a free sew along hosted by Riley Blake. This is, I think, our fourth year doing it or fifth. And all the blocks are designed by different RBD designers. And it's a mystery quilt, though you can peek at the final layout and see everything if you want to know what it looks like. But for the most part, it's a mystery quilt. And so you won't know until the pattern releases each week what the pattern, what the design looks like. So it's really been fun. I am having a blast. I am sewing with afternoon tea for this. So that's been really great. And so I want to show you my blocks. So they're kind of all over the place here. But um, so I'll just kind of lay them out. This is the first block. It's um, and so I'm just going to go through. This is the second. This is the one I designed. And this is the third. I love this little pinwheel that's in here. And then the block that was released last week is the Framed Star block, and it's by Fran uh, Gulick. She's uh, Cotton and Joy. Cotton and Joy? Yeah, I think so. On Instagram, so you can check her out. She's fabulous. You guys are going to love her. If you're not familiar with her as a designer, definitely check out her designs and fabrics. Her quilt patterns are really, really great, and her fabrics are gorgeous. So this is her block from last week. We released this on Tuesday and I really love how it just has these pops of different directional fabrics and you can have a lot of fun with this one as far as what pieces you put in the corner. And this is a block that actually would look really pretty on the, on the bias. So if you were to make an entire quilt with this and do some fun sashing in there, I think that would be a really fun um, block to have on the bias because it looks so cute. It does look like a framed star that way. So I wanted to show you that one on the bias. So we have a new one coming out tomorrow um, and it's really cute too. It's designed, gosh, who's it designed by? I don't remember, but it's um, really fun. So watch for my website for that tomorrow. And if you're sewing along with afternoon tea, let me know. Oh, the other thing I'm doing with these is I'm using as a background one of the new, um, we're not going to focus. There we go. One of the new Dainty Daisy low volumes. Mm -hmm. Can see. Let's see. It doesn't like it. 
Maybe because my hand's here. I don't know. It's one of the Dainty Daisy Low Volumes, and it's, there we go. You can see the pink little daisies and the little speckles, and it just looks so cute. It's really, I'm so happy with how these low volumes turned out in Dainty Daisy. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's my basic from Riley Blake Designs. So um, check out that if you're looking for something fun to use as a background of a quilt that doesn't, that accents the fabrics, but doesn't take away from the fabrics. So that is that one. And then I'm also sewing along with the Shine Together quilt. And that is a quilt that highlights Hush Hush 3, which is Riley Blake's third low volume collection. So it's a really colorful quilt. I'll show you what it looks like without knocking a bunch of things onto the floor. <laughs> this is what the quilt looks like. It's called Shine Together. And it's hard to tell. It looks like a really colorful quilt. But all of the background fabrics are different low volumes. And I've written on this so I know which of my blocks go where. So that's what, if it looks a little bit messy, that's what's happening there. Um, but it's just going to be really fun. I'm sewing with Dainty Daisy and then the low volumes from the collection. So last week, of every week, designers that participated in Hush Hush 3 are sharing alternatives for these star blocks. So this is the way the pattern is written and you can make it up exactly like this right now. But inside these stars are, diff are six, inches, six inch blocks. So Riley Blake is showing tutorials for those. But the designers are also releasing alternative blocks to go in the center. So last week I sewed up Amanda Niederhauser, Jedi Craft Girl. I sewed up her block center, and of course it's a cat. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Amanda, she's very much a cat person. Um, and we love her for it, and we love her kittens. So this is her, um, her block. Again, this is just the six inch block. So I have a new gray kitty that I introduced to you guys a few months ago. Her name's Adelaide, and so she has white whiskers. And so I added some little white whiskers to my cute kitten. Isn't it fun? And then I used the charcoal gray, which is one of the new Dainty Daisy colors. So this is Amanda's low volume. It's got these little leaves on it. Isn't it so cute? And I paired it with this really pretty plaid. And I'm not sure who designed this plaid, but it looks really great together. And these star points are also one of the new Dainty Daisy colors, and it's the jade color. So we had Alpine Alpine and Waterfall first, and so um, I'm mixing in the new colors that we just had released in December, so that's really been fun. So this pattern you can find the instructions for on Amanda's Instagram page. What I did with that is I just took a screenshot of the page that showed the measurements of the block and then put it together for that, and she kind of walks you through on Instagram how to sew it together, but it's a really fun, fast little cat block that is only... Um, six inches so you can use it for a lot of things. So it's really, really cute. <laughs> oh, Leslie says she loves Dainty Daisy. Thank you. And Dorothy says she just got her fat quarter bundle of all the Dainty Daisy colors today. Yay. Thank you so much, Dorothy. You're the best. Oh, you guys like it. <laughs> uh, Sandra um, said she wants to ask a question off topic. There's a shop hop coming up. If she can find some low volumes, how much is an average background amount? I'd like to pick up some for future quilts. So do you want to use one low volume for the entire quilt or do you want to mix and match? Like for the shine together, like this one, you can see how we mix and match some low volumes. So if you want to do that, I would say you could probably easily get, you know, it depends on how many you're going to buy. Um, this, uh, this we're using a fat quarter bundle of um, background fabrics. So they're all different, Hush Hush 3 fabrics. But if you're wanting to buy just one, then maybe buy three or four yards of a low volume because that typically would cover most quilts. So I hope that helps. It's a rather vague answer. <laughs> oh, Rebecca says the color is beautiful. Thanks. And Pamela says she got Amanda's newest book for Christmas. She loves the kitty in that book. Yes, yeah, so sweet. Yay. Okay, so that is our shine together. So let's do, you guys want to see the T tea, um, tea cross stitch patterns? And then we'll do giveaway at the end, okay? So hang in there, everybody. <laughs> 
Okay. I'm going to kind of set these off to the side and show you these as we go. So we are making up, some of these are big. <laughs> we are making up the tea party uh, quilt pattern and I, if you're not familiar with the fact that I love to take sometimes my quilt patterns and turn them into cross stitch patterns. And I did that for the tea party quilt and it doesn't even fit, it's a big one. Um, so this, I'll turn it sideways so you can kind of see a little bit better. This is the Tea Party Cross Stitch, and um, it's a really fun stitch. This one is stitched on 14 count, and it is sized in a, it is put in a 12 by 16 frame. So it's a pretty good size stitch, but it's also really, really fun. So I like to do the florals, um, on my, I tried to keep those going through on the teacups and the teapots, and then of course I added this really fun floral border, and it even has the cute little um, cross stitch for the uh, shelves. So this is the Tea Party stitch, cross stitch. Again, all of these are in the shop, and you and they're going to start being in other shops as well. So if you want your local needlework shop to carry them, you can have them send me an email and we'll get them in for you guys. But um, you can buy them from me right now, both paper or PDF versions. The fun thing about this one is it's a big stitch, but it also comes with a free mini stitch and it's included in the pattern. So this little guy is super cute and it just includes the teapot and teacup. I'll hold that up so you can see it a little bit. And then it has a cute scalloped frame. And for some of these, I went ahead and put framed the piece on a smaller piece of backing board. And then I put a little bit of afternoon tea behind it. So it would have that pop of color. So I picked the um, tea leaves one for this one. I did have some help um, converting these to cross stitch our um, Allison from Arizona. Um, her Etsy shop is um, on, gonna be on the bottoms of the things. Allison, put your Etsy shop uh, link in the comments so people can find it. Um, but it's Mrs. Allison, where is your name? Mrs. Arizona Family Zoo Stitches is what she is on um, YouTube. So you can check that out. Um, so, oh, Teresa says she needs to learn how to cross stitch. It's so easy, Teresa. It's really fun and simple. And I have some instructions, but there's also a ton of cross stitch videos out there too. So this is the Tea Party set. This comes um, included, like in the mini is included in the pattern. So that is really fun. The other large piece that we have is called, um, Tea, time for tea and it's a topography pattern so this one's really fun I'm super excited um, with how this came out so it's it's time for tea in the center and this is a I'm gonna have to look up this is also in a 12 by 16 frame and I don't remember the fabric that I used for this one um, but it has this gorgeous it's on the back of the pattern um, and it's also in the listing on my website so if you really want to know you can check that out um, but I did put on the pattern like what it was stitched on so but I love the kind of almost tea washed look to this one and the other thing that I did with these is I tried to keep the colors all pretty much the same throughout the whole series. So if you buy several of each of the colors, then you'll have the floss to stitch the others in the group. So um, so this one has all these different kinds of tea. I'm gonna come up a little bit closer so you can see it's Irish breakfast, some of my favorites, Earl Grey, chamomile, robos, um, orange pico, and then just some of the like, you know, favorites. So it's, it's a fun stitch. And it's not, it looks big, but it's not crazy as far as time consuming. So it's a really, really fun one to have in your kitchen or to make for a friend um, or in a shop or something like that. So that is, the camera is kind of warping this a little bit. I promise this is straight, <laughs> but it looks like it's kind of coming into like a weird thing, but it's, it is straight. So this is the Time for Tea Typography. And we also have a couple, three more. Guys, three more. So this is one of my favorites in the series. 
This is a 9 by 12 frame, and this is the Roses tea set. If you guys have seen the uh, Little Roses charm and needle minder, this is the matching cross stitch pattern. So this is the Roses one, and I also did the small um, backing board with the fabric, the floral fabric from Afternoon Tea. This one does take a little bit to stitch because we have a lot going on here, but oh my gosh, you guys are gonna love stitching this one out because it turns out so pretty. So here is, I'm gonna come up a little bit closer so you can see some of the detail there of those roses and the flowers and the little teacup. Isn't it fun? And you're definitely gonna need the roses um, tea needle minder to hold your needle when you're not stitching. This is the charm, that won't hold your needle, but the needle minder will. <laughs> so, and uh, this one, all these frames came from Amazon. They're just, um, you know, basic frames because I didn't really want them to take away from the stitching. But you can get creative as far as what you put them on. Um, there's so many great ideas out there for ways to frame and finish these. So we have two more. So the next one, I'm going down in size. <laughs> this is the little teacup bouquet. This is a fun one. I don't remember the size frame. This is, so it's 11 and a half by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven by 11, that's really random. But that's what it is. So it's kind of a long, tall one. This one also would look cute if you just put it on the backing board and then put it on like a wood plaque or something like that. You could do something really fun. And um, I put it on so you can see a little bit. It's got the backing board. Um, and then I put the gingham from Afternoon Tea behind it. And I don't know if you guys can see, but this is on Lori Holt's like malted milk, I think is what it's called. It's again, it's on the description of the pattern on the back but it has a softer kind of tea. Can you see the variations here in the like? It almost looks lightly tea stained, so it looks really pretty. And so there's the florals, and then they kind of come out of the teacup with the cute little tea bag there. So that one is a really fun one. This is called the Teacup Bouquet, and um, you can find that one in the shop. And then the littlest baby of the family is this cute little one. It's so fun, I love it. This one is in a seven by seven frame. And again, I backed it with the fabric. I'll hold that up so you can see it a little bit more. And I did this one on that same like tea stained, I think it's malted milk fabric. So this one I love because it's like the hang out with friends and spill the tea kind of thing there is a tiny bit of back stitching on this one but it's just the steam of the tea if you um it won't take you very long to do but if back stitching completely freaks you out leave it off and your teacup will look just as cute so this one is a very fast one to stitch up and it's a great one that if you have floss left over from one of the bigger patterns it again it uses the same colors so you can easily stitch it up from um, the leftover floss. Or if you want to do your own color palette, I kind of picked colors that matched the afternoon tea fabrics. But if your colors, if that doesn't match your house, then go crazy and pick your own colors. So this one's a good one to make up for a friend or to make up if you want a quick stitch and you have like leftover floss from other projects. So this one's a nice little one. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys love these. Again, they're all in the shop right now. I have my new arrivals section linked in today's video description so that you can um, head over and see all those. They're available in paper or PDF patterns. The patterns all include the DMC color suggestions. Again, just suggestions. <laughs> you make them however you would like them. And um, they also have the full color chart to make it easy for you to follow along with. So I hope you guys like them. I would really love to hear what you think. Um, so, and I hope you're excited as I am about this new line of, of cross stitch. We're going to have more, more and more cross stitch patterns. So something fun to be excited about. <laughs> oh, Melissa says that my daughter's going to be hopping with lots of orders because these are all so good. Melissa, that's the sweetest thing ever. Thank you. Okay. You guys want to do giveaways? Are you ready? Are you excited? Okay. I have prizes from last week and the week before that have not been claimed. 
If you think that you may have, well, I'll tell you right now, Mary Kendall from two weeks ago and Barbara Kempen, 2482 from last week. If y'all don't message me in um, a week, uh, they're gonna go back in the prize kitty. So if if that is who you are, <laughs> check, send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com and I will get your prize to you. Um, this is your last chance. <laughs> but last week we had a really fun prize. This is Hush Hush 3 that I was talking to you guys about. This is a 10 inch stacker. If you love these, I do have fat quarter bundles and 10 inch stackers of Hush Hush 3 in my shop. These are some of the different low volumes that are there. And it's really hard to tell what they are. I like these vintage sewing machines. I think they're so cute. But here's the variety that we have going on there. So this is a 10 inch stacker. To go with that, I have three five inch stackers of Bellissimo Gardens. I don't know if I'm saying it, Bellissimo, Bellissimo. You guys know. Um, this is by My Mind's Eye and it's a stunning floral. Look at that, you guys. Look at these florals, Oh, And then stripes and plaids to go with it. Love! So I have three of these for you guys. And if you want to be inspired and make this up, this is my Sunshine and Daisies quilt pattern. And it's perfect for five inch stackers because these little flowers use the five inch stackers. So you can use the low volumes behind and then the florals as the flowers. And it's super, super cute. All you'll need is like maybe this accent fabric and then the, the border. So really, really fun. And our winner this week is Mona. Mona, you're our winner. <laughs> Send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com and we will get your prize out to you this week. So congratulations, Mona, yay. All right, I have something fun for you guys and it's something that's going to be in the shop and isn't yet, but it will be this week. So check it out. Look what I have for you. This just looks like pink fabric until we turn it sideways and ta-da! This is my fat quarter bundle. I'm gonna take the package off because this one I'm gonna keep for me. I'll give you one that's that's um, unpackaged, or no, is packaged. <laughs> okay, so these are the gorgeous, should we open it? Let's open it, why not? This is the gorgeous colors of Dainty Daisy. So I'm gonna flip through these really fast so you guys can see them. So this is a big stack of fabric, you guys, look at that. There are 30 fat quarters in here. So I'm just going to kind of flip through and I'm going to try and remember the names of all of them. And I'm not in any way guaranteeing, even though I designed these, that I'm actually going to remember what I called them. So <laughs> bear with me if I don't. So we have frosting, peony, let's make a pretty fan with them, lipstick, that looks orange, it's really not, it's kind of a pinky peachy color. Uh, this is jazzberry jam. This is red, like a Riley red. It's like they're red, red. And again, it's not looking super great on the thing, but it's a really pretty red. This is darker red. It's a barn red. We have pumpkin, butterscotch, because you guys know that I love a good gold, right? Honey, it's a little bit lighter. This is mint, alpine. We had these two colors already. But now we're also adding in grass. This is like a really nice kind of medium green, kind of a Kelly green. Mona, my email is bev at flamingotoes.com. Okay, and if you can't find it, go to my website or linked in the video description and it should have my email there. Okay, so grass, we have alpine, which we had last year. You can see it's got a bit more of a light tealness to it. Um, this is that jade color I was telling you about. We'll start a new row. This is Songbird. It's kind of a light blue green. It's very, it's not super close. It's, well, it is close. It's kind of a cross between the mint and the waterfall. So it's kind of in between. This is one of my favorite new colors and we're gonna use this background as the background for our not the next so long, but the one after that, the Heartland so long. It's called Stargazer, and it is a really gorgeous, like dusty teal color. So st that Stargazer, this is regular navy. 
and this is denim. We've used a lot of denim in different projects. This is waterfall. So you can kind of see how this uh, songbird has more green in it than this. This is a little bit closer to like an aqua. We're adding in a lilac, even though I don't sew with purple very often. <laughs> I know you guys do, so that is being added just for you because I adore you. <laughs> we have two grays. This is a regular gray, and this is charcoal. And we have this really great licorice black with little cute spots on it. It's a fun black that has a little bit extra. So that's all the colors, and then we go into the low volumes. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but... This is a white on white. Can you tell? It's a white on white, so there's speckles and daisies. This is the peony, so it's a pink flower. That's the one that I'm using for my RBD block challenge background. We have a barn red, so nice red dots. Not dots, flowers, you get the gist. This is, I don't know, I'm not saying I have a favorite, but it is up there with one of my favorites. This is the Vintage Pastels Low Volume. So we have an assortment of colors. We have pink, uh, alpine, waterfall, honey, all together in the same low volume. Look at how sweet that is, you guys. Isn't it fun? I love, love, love this. This, we also have the honey. I'm using this on my Quilted Witch background. I'm sewing along with the Quilted Witch pattern from Lori Holt, so I'm using this one. They have, we have a gray, which is super great neutral. It'll go with everything. And then we also have the black and white also. Like if you want to contrast against your fabrics, if you have a lot of pastels or if you have a really colorful quilt, use the black as the um, background and it has this really great contrast and it'll pop. So that is the Dainty Daisy Fat Quarter Bundle. So I have these in. I'm going to take some photos and get these in the shop this week. Um, and I also will have 10 inch stackers when they arrive. I don't know when that is sometime today or this week So I will have 10 inch stackers. So this beautiful bundle is part of today's But then also because Wednesday is Valentine's Day to go with this cute fabric. I have our brand new Valentine's truck for you guys. Look how cute. This is the needle our Valentine's needle minder and it's a little vintage truck full of hearts and Valentine's and flowers so that is this week's prize. If you would like to be entered, it's super easy. All you have to do is leave your name, um, not leave your name, <laughs> leave a comment in today's video and that counts as your entry. I will announce the winner next week. And um, we are, it's super easy to do. So I'll just, I draw the winner uh, the week before, no, the week after, I'm sorry. My brain's just gone. <laughs> So next week, we're gonna sew up those teacup Ds. Those are stacked together, and I'll have some tips on stacking those for you. And um, then we only have two more weeks after this week. So I have lots of fun things coming up on the blog this week. I have more sew along updates. I have made up, I don't know if you guys saw Fat Quarter Shop's really cute love mini quilt. I got mine sewn up this weekend, so I'm gonna have that for you guys. This. Um, Wednesday probably. I'm going to bind it today. It's really cute. I use Sandy Gervais uh, fa uh, fabric for that. She has a Valentine's collection out that's really darling. So anyway, I hope you guys have a fabulous week. I want to see your teacups. If you guys have questions about anything, please email me. I'm always happy to answer. And if you guys want to check out those brand new cross stitch patterns, I would love for you to visit the shop. Let me know what you think. Um, thanks to Allison for helping me convert them. Um, and um, Hopefully you guys have a fabulous week. Stay warm <laughs> and I will see you next Monday. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos. And if you would like this video, that would help me attend too. All right, everybody have a fabulous week. I'll talk to you next Monday. Bye.